Hello and welcome to the Capitol Report on NTD Television. I'm Steve Lance. U.S. airport websites were temporarily knocked offline this morning. They include those for major airports in Atlanta and Los Angeles. A Russian-speaking hacking group known as Killnet is claiming responsibility for the hacks. The group also claimed responsibility last week for knocking out U.S. state government websites, as well as briefly immobilizing a U.S. Congress website in July. Killnet stepped up its activity after Russia's invasion of Ukraine, specifically targeting organizations in NATO countries. There were no immediate signs of impact to actual air travel, but it may have impacted people seeking travel information. The TSA is investigating the hacks. More than a dozen people are dead in Ukraine and many more wounded. This after the biggest Russian offensive in months. Electricity is out in much of Ukraine's western regions. Many of the airstrikes targeted critical infrastructure in pedestrian areas, including a playground in downtown Kiev. And today's Melina Wisecup has more. More than a dozen people killed in Ukraine following the biggest and broadest Russian attack since the early days of the war. I saw the flash in the building that was destroyed. I saw how the concrete tumbled and fell, and there was panic everywhere. We started to run, to hide, to run as far as possible from the explosion. Power lines knocked out in this city and others. Several towns in Ukraine now coping with electricity outages. Putin retaliating after he says Ukrainian forces destroyed a bridge spanning Ukraine and Crimea. The Russian president personally launched the attack, targeting power plants and critical infrastructure. A massive strike with air, sea and land-based high-precision long-range weapons was performed against Ukrainian energy, military command and communication facilities. In addition, Ukraine's capital, Kiev, was hit by several missiles, one striking a playground and another a popular pedestrian bridge during rush hour. Residents were seen on the streets with blood on their clothes and hands, several cars damaged and destroyed. The hours-long attack marked a sudden military escalation by Moscow. President Zelensky telling citizens to stay in bomb shelters. They want to annihilate our energy supplies. They're hopeless. That second target is our people. There could be certain shortages with electricity supply, but we will never have shortages with our belief in our victory. And President Biden today spoke with Ukraine's President Zelensky, pledging to continue to provide the country with whatever it needs to defend itself. This includes advanced air defense systems. The president also reiterated that the U.S. will continue to work with its partners to hold Russia accountable through sanctions, etc. While the European Union, uh, the European Parliament president says that she believes that Europe sanctions are not doing enough to deter Russia, while she also called on the EU to to do more and react in a way that's more proportionate to this escalation. The United Nations also held an emergency meeting today where the ambassador denounced Russia as a terrorist state. Reporting in Washington, D.C., Melina Weiskup, NTD News. As the war in Ukraine escalates, Taiwan, facing threats from the Chinese Communist Party, is vowing to defend itself. NTD's Iris Tao has more on what their president says on Taiwan's National Day. Taiwan is celebrating its National Day with parades, performances, and a determination to defend its freedoms. And Taiwan's President Tsai Ing-wen on Monday addressed the tension with mainland China, saying this about the democratic island's sovereignty. The consensus of the Taiwanese people and our ruling and opposition parties is to defend our sovereignty and our free and democratic way of life. On this point, we have no room for compromise. Tsai added that a war between Taiwan and China is absolutely not an option for resolving Beijing's claims to the island, and she reiterated her willingness to talk to Beijing. She also plans to boost the island's defenses, saying the destruction of Taiwan's democratic freedoms would be a major setback for democracies around the world. We will use our actions to tell the world that Taiwan will take on the responsibility of self-defense. 
We will not sit back and wait for our fate to be decided. U.S. lawmakers are praising Taiwan's democracy amid its National Day celebrations. Senator Ted Cruz called the island, quote, a beacon of democracy, adding that its prosperity and freedoms are an ever-present rebuke to the Chinese Communist Party's propaganda and repression. And Senator Marco Rubio wrote that Beijing's aggression makes it all the more important for the U.S. to support Taiwan's sovereignty. Meanwhile, in response to Thai's speech, the Chinese foreign ministry says Taiwan is not an independent state and has no so-called president. The communist regime claims the island as its own and has escalated military threats against it after U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited the island in August. Reporting by Iris Tao, NTD News. Twitter blocked a post from Florida Surgeon General Joseph Latipo. The post promoted an analysis of mRNA COVID-19 vaccines by Florida's health department. They found a heightened number of cardiac-related deaths among men who got vaccinated. Latipo's tweet said, Today we released an analysis on COVID-19 mRNA vaccines the public needs to be aware of. This analysis showed an increased risk of cardiac-related death among men 18 to 39 years of age. Florida will not be silent on the truth. Twitter posted its reason for the block saying, our current misleading information policies cover synthetic and manipulated media, COVID-19, and civic integrity. The media platform had Latipo's tweet restored as of Sunday morning. Over the weekend, Twitter moved to permanently ban Dr. Peter McCullough from the platform. Dr. McCullough is a renowned cardiologist and author of the book, The Courage to Face COVID-19 and we're happy to have him on. Dr. Peter McCullough, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Doctor, it appears that you've been totally banned from Twitter. Uh, Is that the case and what explanation are they giving you, if any? You know, Twitter uh, claimed that I violated the community rules after thousands of consistent posts on scientific abstracts and manuscripts. Uh, This was very carefully done. I was bringing the world the truth on pandemic response through the media. And uh, this was purely of the highest scientific integrity and analysis. And my tweeting pattern didn't change. They simply said I violated the community rules. Now Twitter is uh, backing off with my legal and tech teams. Uh, They initially didn't allow me to download the data. They wiped out all the users in my account. And now they're backpedaling. We'll see what happens this week. But this is just another example of medical censorship by big tech on doctors who uh, have the freedom, according to the First Amendment, to uh, express their scientific views through freedom of speech. Doctor, I mean, PayPal right now backing off their stance here. They were going to turn people in um, for for what they're they're deeming misinformation. Uh, What's your take, California being the hub of, uh, of big tech? You know, I have to tell you, that the PayPal development, uh, that PayPal was gonna judge information or misinformation. Now, three years into the pandemic, I think Americans and PayPal account holders ought to be asking the question, why? Why now and what stimulated PayPal to do this? They quickly reversed. You know what I'm suspicious of, Steve? I'm suspicious of government public health agencies or even the intelligence community putting pressure on PayPal to do something about COVID uh, and and try to use them as an instrument to inflict penalties on those who are, you know, speaking the truth on COVID-19. California AB 2098 is in the open. That is a doctor muzzle law that is intended to penalize doctors, potentially take their license away as they give full and fair informed consent regarding COVID-19, its prognosis, Uh, its management and treatment, particularly the vaccines. Florida Surgeon General Joseph Latipo uh, has just recommended against mRNA vaccines from men ages uh, 19 to 39. What is your reaction to this? I agree with it. You know, I was on Fox News now uh, over a year ago saying no one under age 50 really should take one of these vaccines because the the benefit to risk ratio wasn't there. Now we have hundreds of manuscripts published on myocarditis, heart inflammation, uh, Patone and colleagues in circulation has published 100 fatal cases of heart inflammation. So when we see young people 
uh, now dying unexpectedly, dying either during sports or during sleep. In my view, it should be considered COVID-19 subclinical myocarditis and sudden cardiac death until proven otherwise. Dr. McCullough, uh, back to your, your being banned from Twitter. Um, why have you been so vocal and what has the response actually been from the masses on social media to you know, what you're saying? Now, I'm the most published person in my field in the world in history prior to COVID. I'm one of the most published now on the pandemic response. And I, I felt I had the medical authority and professional responsibility to lead the nation. I've uh, testified uh, twice now in the U.S. Senate, multiple state senates. Uh, I've messaged uh, the best I can through the peer-reviewed literature, as well as uh, with, through podcast and now Substack uh, formats. Uh, people look to me for my analysis, Steve, because I've been accurate and I've been conservative and reasonable in my statements. And we haven't seen any of that type of professional activity, any of that level of, of excellence from our public health officials. They've let us down greatly. Dr. McCullough, people do look to you for your analysis. Um, there are many people that appreciate your perspective. Now that you've been banned from Twitter, you've mentioned Substack. Uh, where can people hear from you? Well, I have a website, uh, petermcculloughmd.com. That'll take you everywhere. The Substack just started. It's enormously popular and probably a better format to get analyses out uh, other than social media. I have growing presence on True Social, Getter, and all the other platforms. You know, the Twitter story is not over. Uh, Elon Musk back on purchasing Twitter offers some hope that uh, this really dark time of, of censorship uh, and Twitter manipulating people's accounts to advance the government false narrative. Hopefully this era is coming to the close with the acquisition and new management of Twitter. Dr. Peter McCullough, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching the Capitol Report. If you want to see our full broadcast, check us out at epochtv.com.